Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. Well, we had the big one, Alabama and LSU this past weekend in Baton Rouge. Great atmosphere. Alabama handled it. You know, LSU made some plays defensively. They picked off Tua Tonga below his first of the year, but Alabama made the plays they needed to make to win the game, and you kind of felt like going in based on everything we'd seen, they were going to do that. Here's how they did it. Here's a counter play for Alabama out of two backs. Going to pull the guard, follow the lead back up there, get it blocked. Then it gets to the next level, and there's a lot of yards after contact right here. Really strong run. There's several things going on in the blocking of this that actually uh, make it work. First of all, they're going to pull that left guard out of there. So with him gone, you look at the leverage then blocking back for the tackle on the end. He's got that position. Center is going to come all the way back to the guard. And the right guard is all the way down on the nose. And so they're going to be able to wall that off back here. So there it is, guard on nose, center back on the defensive tackle, and tackle out on the end. So I've got it walled like we talked about right there. Now, lead guard uh, or, or pulling guard coming up there to get that play side in. And now hat on a hat for everybody. Right tackle is up on the linebacker. He's going to get him. Lead back's going to pick up the next linebacker, so they're going to be hat on a hat. Keep your eye on the physicality of the tackle on the linebacker right here. So now he's knocked off of his feet. And the other linebacker, instead of taking on the back, is kind of running around it. What you'd prefer is to get in that hole and plug it up by knocking the blocker back into the back. And maybe you get some help. He tries to run around it, and now the lane for the running back, and he's out to shoot. This is that slant for TD down in the red zone. Off a little run action. Look at the next level. Take the one-on-one, -on -one, throw it in there. A couple things now, you know, he could possibly be reading this on the fly, like RPO, going to look at the sweep and mesh that with the running back. When he does, it's obvious eyes of the quarterback are here on the next level. But I think pre-snap, because one of those uh, underneath defenders, either a nickel or a linebacker, is widened out on the number three receiver, and both are inside the box, I think pre-snap he already knows he's got the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, if it is RPO, if not, it's just straight pass, but the read pretty much given away. And so then you take the one-on-one, -on -one, throw it in there. You see the safety that makes the hit. You know, at the time the ball is going to be released, he's still in the middle of the field, and that's because of that fake. You know, three-receiver formation, so he's being honest with his alignment right in the middle of the hashes on this call. And then that mesh point with the running back held him there just long enough. It's going to kind of open this window and make it a little bit easier to squeeze that in there. On defense, 92, Quentin Williams, defensive tackle disruptor all night long, into the backfield here, pushes two back to the QB, throws them off, and a sack. If you go back and look, again, just the timing of all of it, watch him fire off at the point that the fake happens with the running back. So as the snap is caught and you got a fake going on here, ball snapped here, and he's already at least three yards uh, upfield at the time that that happens, before the QB can turn and set up and hitch, now he's a full five yards deep with the guard on his left arm, the back hitting him on his right arm. Now watch him take his left arm and throw them off and then create a lane to the QB. Throws them off. Now he's free to the quarterback. Now LSU made some plays on defense too. Here's a run through from the linebacker. Backside linebacker runs it down. Big tackle for loss. I think what you had right there was maybe a bust uh, from the offensive tackle on the right side. Bama's pulling both guards over uh, out in front of the run. So that right guard pulling out leaves that gap open. The tackle is going to see the end go wide, even though he lined up down inside. If you uh, see where he lined up, he goes inside or outside. And so I think the tackle's just kind of guessing, well, that's going to be the guy in the gap. But when he changes course and goes outside, it just makes that tackle freeze just for a, a, a split second so that the linebacker now can run through that gap right behind the pulling guard and not be touched free to the running back. Three-man route, wide side of the field, got a hard corner up top. He's going to take that one-on-one -on -one and throw the back shoulder and complete it. Now, LSU uh, always does a pretty nice job of disguising what they're doing. And here they make it look like they've got four uh, on the front, and then just two, a linebacker there in the 
gap and then a linebacker behind him standing up. So six in the box. And with six-man protection, you could block all of those. And that's why the quarterback is confidently going to stand in there, even though they're trying to confuse the protection. But they only bring three of those guys on the front, bring a fourth off the edge, but drop two to replace. So only four guys are coming. And not only does it not confuse your front, but the QB is not worried about it either because pre-snap, he's confidently read six on six. So he's not even thinking about blitz or looking rush right here. He checks that hash. And if he stays inside, he's got the one-on-one. And sure enough, that's what he gets. It makes a uh, catchable back shoulder throw. The receiver does a fantastic job keeping his feet in. So a couple of things you started to see in the first half is some of the blitz stuff that Dave Aranda does at LSU, dropping guys off, bringing guys from different places, trying to confuse the, the protection. It didn't confuse Alabama's offensive line, and it certainly didn't bother Tua Tagovailoa enough anyway in the first half. And he still was able to find the one-on-one -on -one matchup and make the play against it, which they've done all year long. Third and two for LSU, they go heavy. And the backside linebacker for Alabama gets through unblocked, catches him at the line of scrimmage. And it's possible that this run was designed to stay play side and come here in the back, just chose to try to come backside. One thing that might be an indicator is Alabama gave you a nose guard and a three-man front with their hands down. And the center is blocking the nose, and so is that left guard. They're going to double uh, that nose guard while the up back comes back to pick up that backside uh, defensive tackle. So the way, again, the play looks, even though the uh, back decides to kick it back, it's double on that nose and then one-on-one -on -one beside that. And you could have that hole working. you got plenty of numbers to the play side, but what you don't have accounted for is that backside linebacker. The running back decides to come back and try to hit that gap, and the unaccounted for linebacker makes the stop. Here's the tight end corner route into the end zone for a touchdown. It's against man coverage with a free safety in the middle. He gets wide of both, and the throw takes him outside. Pre-snap look. Here's what the quarterback sees is 3-4. It's a nickel package with that 3-4 because that's a safety uh, right there. But pretty much you can tell on alignment what, I, what you've got is man-to-man -man there, man-to-man -man across with a single safety in the middle of the field. Now the route, we can't see on TV what the underneaths are, but you have two underneaths there to kind of clear that outside. And he's going to get on top. Safety in the middle of the field hung there, can't get over, being chased by nine in the man-to-man. Uh, -man. But you can see he's outside, so if the throw's out here, he's got a chance and it's a perfect throw. You're going to give it a counter look again out of two backs and pull it on the RPO, throw the slant, Hit him running, and now four is outrunning the secondary for a big play. And a couple of things why I say it looks like RPO to me is, uh, first of all, you look at the uh, action of the front. Right guard pulling to get out in front, lead back in front of that, and then counter action. If you look at the quarterback's eyes, they are at the next level watching a linebacker. They soft it over here on the backside because it doesn't matter, and they're run blocking on the play side. But quarterback's eyes are here, and I think he's reading linebacker. And if linebacker is up or out, tells him pull that thing, especially if he's out, which he is here. So now once he's pulled it, he's got double slant, deep and shallow, and you're going to either high-low the um, zone or read the man-to-man. -man. In this case, he's looking at that hash defender, and as soon as he comes off the slant, as, I mean, in a millisecond, as he turns and lets him get behind him, you can see quarterbacks already in a throwing posture and about to get the ball out. So within a second of him turning him loose, ball's coming out already now, and it's going to be accurate. And that's the way you read the RPO. This is a quarterback scramble for a touchdown. The end, outside rush, really gets upfield deep. He kind of feels it, and now he's gone. Some guys were covering routes down the field for a long time and didn't realize a quarterback was running the ball. I'll show you a couple of examples of that. Um, again, as he escapes, linebacker in coverage on the back. Now, watch the timing. Quarterback's full speed ahead, about to break the line of scrimmage, 
before he actually realizes and sees that he has a ball and tries to turn and get there. And now it's too late. He's got a head of steam and he's fast enough to outrun you. You see it from behind. One is knowing he likes a wide side man-to-man stuff. The safety lined up here and is watching his eyes and therefore is drifting now to the other side of the field. Then as he's escaping, there's that linebacker who's got his eyes this way but can't quite see that the football's coming at him. The other thing is DB for LSU slipped down and fell, and now he's trying to recover and runs himself completely out of it. He has no idea the quarterback's headed his way. And now it's too late, and a safety can't get over. And Alabama's defensive front closed the game out. Watch them bust two double teams right here at end and at tackle for the uh, sack. So it's just four-man rush versus six-man protection because the back is staying in and the tight end is releasing. Watch 92 Williams and 49 here at uh, end. Williams splits a double team. 49 has got tackle and back. He pushes them back in the QB's lap. 92 splitting the double. They bust two double teams and results in a sack. All right, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, if you have a question or comment otherwise, let me know about it. Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Radio Wyatt. And also videos, YouTube and Facebook, find all that stuff there. Just slash Matt Wyatt Media. And thanks for watching. Also, thanks to Renaissance Bank for sponsoring this video and others. They love SEC football. So y'all head over there and tell them thanks. Tell them I sent you over at RenaissanceNation.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.